Okay, so we now have the Olympia SM4. Got this technically a bit pricey, but I mean, it was in pretty great condition. So that's the. If you lift that from any side, that's the carriage lock. Margins, paper release. Oh uh, dear, let me get, let me go back and get my paper. Okay. There's a little lever here for the line finder. And that's your line spacing. I'm not sure where I'm going to put my bubble tea this time around. Uh, there's a button on the side here. Lifts the paper scale. Page scale. Here we have a Chat One milk tea. Dazzling black milk tea. I think I asked for extra tea, half sugar, and no ice. Yep, tastes better this time. Mm. Have later. I don't think there's an all oh here, this one. That clears everything. Time is eight oh seven PM EST. This is definitely, well initially, I kind of didn't like the feel of the machine or thought like I needed more effort or finesse, but eventually I started um, getting used to the feel, or funny enough, it was actually when I got my, or received my Torpedo 18B, which was in pretty nice condition, but to other surprise, I found that machine to feel rather heavy, like substantially heavy. And though still very much quite snappy, but almost too snappy. Almost, like I might even call it like a very long throwed rubber dome of mechanical typewriters. Like that's kind of how the force curve feels on that machine. Um, on the other hand, this Olympia is basically like a quite lighter version of its big brother, the SG-1. And, yeah, also people on the typewriter discord were surprised when I both described the complete opposite sentiment that this machine is lighter, very light, and lighter than the torpedo. So, yeah, one of the, my favorite things to do was just easily and very lightly roll the keys, roll my fingers over the keys, and let the type bars fly. So, in terms of like the actual feel, it's very light, smooth, kind of very direct linkage. When you type, it's almost like 
it's just not there. Or it's, it's a weird silkiness. For some reason, it's the hardest for me to describe out of all my typewriters because it's just so direct. Just, even though it technically almost feels like one of the most unusual in truth. So. It's neither buttery nor snappy, per se, at least by my definition. Remember, in the Adler Fabry video. I had absolutely no idea that my bubble tea was gradually creeping toward the edge, and every single time I took a sip, I saved it from certain doom. Oh, and of course, two set. <laughs> yes, I do follow that channel. They recently published some bubble tea videos, so. That kind of put me in the mood for bubble tea. And it's actually thanks to them that I finally upgraded from Taro. <laughs> Sorry, you have to hear my chewing. I don't mean to offend anyone, but I guess the somewhat amusing thing is when someone describes a typewriter as quote-unquote phenomenal, but they hunt and peck. I am a firm believer that the only real way to truly appreciate the feel of a typewriter is to touch type with all your fingers, even for the P, and do so fast, where you can really type at the limit of, and just experience the pure performance of this machine. Only then, I believe, can you call a typewriter phenomenal. But that's just my opinion.
Oh, I forgot to undo the the line finder. Another thing about this machine is that I think what just happened a few seconds ago was I encountered the automatic rhythm for somehow this machine. I think because you know how you have your ribbon and your spool, and as it unwinds, or at least as you're winding, you have a larger moment arm torque. So if you know high school physics, uh, then basically if your ribbon is further out and winding, then the ribbon advanced mechanism has to encounter more force in order to turn the ribbon that makes the action feel a bit heavier or even a bit more sluggish. But once you encounter the automatic ribbon reverse, you um, finally start winding on the empty part, and suddenly the force decreases. Um, so you don't always notice this on all typewriters, but for a few of them, you do get a sudden improvement in the type of feel. Um, right, I think I forgot to mention, yeah, back. So I was talking about the torpedo and how, for me, that is, by definition, what I call snappy, which is to say, in midway during the, during the strike, your force curve isn't like this, where it increases and plateaus, or not linear, like spring, not constant somehow, or not exponential, or polynomial, like on, as I would describe the feel of the Smith Corona 88 Secretarial to be, um, though that machine is still quite fast. 
um, but it's rather like this, if not even Gaussian, um, where as you're accelerating the mass of the action and its inertia midway during the stroke, the your finger slows down while the action under its momentum can, continues to move. So you experience that as a kind of rounded up, rounded decrease of the force. And that can be pleasant for certain machines, but in the case of the torpedo, for me, it's a bit too much. Though, I think maybe the worst thing about that torpedo was the hard platen, which makes it louder and kind of makes having to type hard. Like, sometimes you can be too snappy such that you feel like you're either typing too lightly or typing too hard, and that can make it unpleasant. So hopefully once I replace the platen that machine, it will, I might start to better ascertain the nice things about the torpedo. And, yeah, basically, what happened was after I typed on that torpedo for the first time, I went back to this machine, and it felt, it just felt amazing. <laughs> like, just ridiculously light and effortless. Um, effortlessness was also a thing that I associated with the Smith Corona Silent 4 Series. Um, the black one with three stripes on either side. Um, I might show some footage at a later time, but that was a quite nice machine. Mm. Yeah, it's getting darker. That's it for the Olympia SM4.